Okay, I really hope that you all understand how this works by now. If you don't, this is basically Warframe trivia speedrunning. This video will spoil a bunch of stuff like always, so click away if you want to remain pure. Got all that? Alright, let's rock. You can actually skip the entire first phase of Vahex boss fight by simply running to the next room and ignoring him. Eventually you'll reach the pipe you're supposed to slide down, and the second phase of the fight will begin as normal. Enemies in Tier 4 Void missions deal 200% more damage than they normally would at their current level. This also extends to enemies that spawn conditionally, like Acolytes and Assassins. By the way, when I say Tier 4 Void, I mean anything branching off of Sedna. If you mind control a turret on the Plains or Kuva Fortress with Nyx, it will teleport around to keep up with you. I stole this one from Reddit, so shout out to user EnderCorePL for this discovery. If you're quick enough, you can use Transference during the startup of the Handshake animation. Because the Drifter uses the same rig as Warframes, you can then give your own frame a handshake, which actually counts for the Nightwave challenge. The Wukong trick mentioned in Episode 1 counts for this challenge too, by the way. When playing the quests The Second Dream and The War Within, the Landing Craft segment of the Orbiter uses its old look, while the rest of the Orbiter uses the modern look. The damage reduction from Mesa's Shatter Shield doesn't protect her from AoE attacks or melee damage. If you double tap Crouch while riding a K-Drive, you'll perform a ground slam that damages enemies and knocks them down. I know this is pointed out in the Wave Rider, but nobody does that quest. Cephalon Sark, who serves as the announcer for the Index, was actually first featured in the Conclave game mode as Cephalon Capture. He's still there, along with two other unique Cephalons named Vol and Apnar. When killing an enemy under the effects of Energy Vampire, they'll actually give you a slightly random amount of energy, ranging from roughly 98% to 102% of the regular amount. The Aqua Blades interaction on Limbo I mentioned in the last video actually extends to all abilities, so basically any ability on Limbo or allies will damage enemies regardless if they're rifted or not. A lot of people also told me to mention that the rift doesn't affect the operator, which sure is weird, but is that obscure? Is it not normal to press 5 when you're playing Limbo? I'm getting distracted, moving on. Vitus Essence and Steel Essence drops despawn if not picked up after 5 minutes, so if you're waiting for a Smita buff or something, make sure to keep your eye on the clock. On-call crewmates appear to bypass lots of enemy damage reduction. Some examples include the DR present on Liches and Sisters, as well as bosses like Mutalist Allied V. You can shoot through Nova's portals, causing projectiles to be instantly teleported to the end of said portal. Allegedly, enemy grenades that go through portals also become allied grenades, but I have no idea how I would test that. Equinox's fused idol isn't equipable on other Warframes, and also can't be seen in normal missions. It's basically exclusive to Equinox and only usable in social spaces. Because Buzzlock's alt fire has infinite punch through, it can shoot into Frost's bubble. Fluctus can do this too, but strangely enough, Zenith's semi-auto mode can't. If you're playing on Earth and you encounter the Toxin Mixer tile, you can find a dead Grenier with a backpack and some other supplies in this broken pipe. He's also missing his face, and has a manic mask laying next to him despite seemingly being a butcher. Zephyr Prime's arm feathers expand outward while she's airborne, and shrink back down to normal when she touches the ground again. If you slide while wearing the Edo Prime chest armor, this weird energy effect will envelop you for a few seconds. When reaching a melee combo count of two times or more, the Acanthus Prime shoulders will shoot out beams of light, and the Spritzail Prime shoulders will cause localized rain splashing effects. There's an account named Shop who has most major items wishlisted, meaning that you can more easily buy them when away from your orbiter as mentioned in the last video. To view this account, type slash profile shop in chat and then navigate to the wishlist tab. From Spawn in Iron Wake, if you go to the left and enter this obscured event, you'll encounter the one and only Grokdrul Ghoul. He doesn't really do anything, but I don't know, I just think he's a cool guy. If you interact with the Syndicate's console in your orbiter, you'll be given an option to visit them, which can be used to fast travel to various Syndicates as well as characters like Teshin and Samaris. The projectiles fired by Velocitus will ricochet off surfaces in Arcwing, but possess no such trait when used on the ground. The damage buff from Mirage's Eclipse ability increases the scanning speed for Codex and Synthesis scanners. I also want to mention that there's a patch note about damage abilities affecting scanners being fixed in 2013, so I'm not sure if this is a long-standing bug or a bug-turned feature. In addition to void damage, electric and magnetic damage can also pop the bubbles that appear in sabotage missions. If you cast your fourth ability as Hydroid while in puddle form, they will instead be localized on you as opposed to where you're looking. There is an extremely small chance upon completing a capture mission to receive a gear item called the Omni Ammo Box. When used, the Ammo Box restores ammo to all of your weapons and is then consumed. If you complete a quest that rewards a Warframe blueprint, but you already own said Warframe, then in addition to the blueprint you'll also be given a random Riven mod. 
If you load into the Orb of Alice on the Steel Path and then start the fight for the Exploiter Orb, she'll still be at level 50. The 150% increase to health, armor, and shields from being on Steel Path still applies to her though. You can input a slide attack during a melee attack to get a decent boost in range. This is admittedly kinda tricky with high attack speed though. Manually detonating Wolf Sledge while it's in air launches enemies really far for some reason. During the Patient Zero quest, you play a reactor sabotage mission on Eris, despite the fact that there normally are no reactor sabotage missions on Eris. There isn't even a tile for such thing in its tile set, meaning that a tile from the old Corpus ship tile set is used instead. Scanning an unalerted enemy counts as a stealth scan, granting double scan progress and also granting more affinity, which in turn leads to more Samaris rep. Branching off of this, Baruch's lull resets the alert level of enemies, meaning that it can be used to stealth scan enemies that have previously spotted you. This effect also allows you to get stealth kill affinity bonuses off of enemies that have previously seen you, or to prevent you from losing it. If you're using the Safeguard Augment on Neja, you can sprint and then look behind you to cast Warding Halo on your Sentinel. Pressing melee while a Glaive is in flight will immediately summon it back to you. This works with Cedo's alt fire as well, albeit inconsistently. You can actually find a wide array of leaderboards for various missions and events by going to the pause menu in the Orbiter, then going to Profile, then Leaderboards. You can find weekly ones for various endless missions and minigames, daily ones for K-Drive races, although strangely only for the Valis, and archived event leaderboards. There's also this one labeled Dedicated Servers, but I honestly have no idea what any of this means. Also, who the fuck got 316 points in Happy Zephyr this week? Are you okay, my gamer? The slam effect from Exodia Hunt opens affected enemies up to finishers, making it a good pick for Dagger and Hammer Zaws. Prime Warframes can't use Exalted Weapon Skins that are built on the base, non-primed model, although they can still use Deluxe Skin models. This is even worse for Excalibur though, who can only use the Exalted Blade from the Zotto Deluxe if he is using the skin itself. DE, please change this, I want to use Tenogen Claws on Garuda Prime. Multi-shot mods mess with accuracy accolades, allowing you to hit absurd accuracy percentages. When using Voracious Metastasis on Hildren, it converts the amount of shields consumed from casting into energy for teammates, allowing for absurd energy regen for nearby allies. If Golden Instinct is placed on Lavos, its cooldown can be reduced by using Transmutation Probe. If you enter Exalted Shadow while Gloom is active on Sevagoth, then Sevagoth will keep Gloom active, but still lose energy. However, if you have Arcane Energize on the Shadow, then the energy picked up will also be given to Sevagoth provided you're close enough. Tenno Shields are a special health class exclusive to players, which have a 25% damage reduction to all damage types. Strangely enough, this makes it Void Damage's only bad matchup. Speaking of Void, it also isn't affected by enemy physical or elemental enhancement modifiers and sorties. Rolling actually provides a 75% damage reduction during the animation. It can also be used to shake off certain effects like Mutilist Moa Swarms, Latchers, and even Malice's Magnetize. You also can't be grappled by Ancients or Scorpions during a roll, as these are considered a knockdown. In the Pit Monster Room, which has a chance to spawn in Deimos Isolation Vaults, you can perform an Easter Egg wherein you feed this Sarlacc looking ass and damage various tumors. Upon completing the Easter Egg, you can drop down into the Sarlacc's Maw, wherein you encounter a unique enemy variant, the Jugulus Rex. This enemy spawns nowhere else on Deimos, and instead of spitting out Glaives, it possesses rapid health regeneration, which can be slowed by destroying weak spots on its neck. In addition to boosting weapon damage, Roar also boosts the damage of Warframe abilities. If you miss a throw when fishing on either the Plains or Valis, you have a small chance to catch a Boot or Crewman's Boot respectively, which is accompanied by a fun jingle. Voban's Overdriver Mine can attach to his Tesla Nervos, which boosts their damage and also gives them a new look. By the way, if Voban is affected by Overdriver, it also boosts the damage of his Flechette Orbs, for those who don't know. The damage from Ash's Blade Swarm counts as finisher damage, meaning that if an enemy is killed by a clone directly and not by a resulting slash proc, then they can proc finisher-based arcanes like Ultimatum and Trickery. This also means that Blade Storm's damage can be boosted by Savage Silence and Radiant Finish, which is kinda super busted. Oh, by the way, Parazon finishers can also trigger finisher arcanes. If you have Temporal Anchor active on Protea, you can hold your ultimate down to cancel the rewind as well as the explosion and the energy restoration. Wait, this is a tip on the ability page, isn't it? Eh, not like people read those anyways. Speaking of which, another interesting thing about those tips is that if you have Provoke active on Dayform Equinox and you switch to Nightform, the boosted power strength will be added to the Metamorphosis buff you receive in Nightform. If you trip all three Data Vault Alarms in a Spy Mission, then you'll have to play out an Exterminate mission at the end, kinda like the dreaded Change of Plans from Capture Missions, although this time avoidable. In the Ballroom Simulacrum scene, you can find this button to the right of the arsenal labeled Reset Suit. 
If pressed, the button dispels all active Warframe abilities, although buffs from things like Companions, Arcanes, and Galvanize mods will still be present. Mirage's Sleight of Hand ability will actually hack nearby enemy equipment. Namely, it hacks laser barricades, shock and gas traps, and the various turrets found on the Valis, Plains, and Kuva Fortress. Arc traps too, although strangely enough, not sensor bars. If you go to the pause menu, and then go to options, and then select the accessibility tab, you'll see a customize HUD color under the interface section. If you click on an element to customize, you'll then be able to choose colors from any palette you own, as well as a special palette called accessibility. Neat thing is, if you favorite a color from the accessibility palette, you can use it later for fashion purposes. During Uranus Sabotage, if you get the Manic Bombard variation, you can actually complete the mission without ever fighting him. Up above the main chamber will be a catwalk with two canisters. Grab these and deposit them in receptacles on each side of the main chamber, hacking their corresponding consoles as you go. Once you've deposited both canisters and hacked both consoles, the bombard will be poisoned and you'll be free to extract. Be careful about the sensor though, if it spots you, you'll be forced to fight the bombard regardless of how close you were to poisoning him. While Shadows of the Dead is active, Necros can press 4 to heal his currently alive shadows back to full health, while also playing a shorter version of the regular casting animation if none of them have died yet. Wait, this is an ability menu tip too, isn't it? Fuck, how many of these have been ability menu tips? Pretty much every Prime Warframe has special effects on their abilities that add some extra visual flair with no real gameplay benefit. Examples include a lightning bolt coming from the sky when using Volt Prime Shock, extra golden icicles that spawn when using Frost Prime's Ice Wave, and Loki Prime's decoy using a Lex Prime instead of a Lado. If you have the Glyph Prism gear item bound to a hotkey, then you can press said hotkey to use the item while in your orbiter. Gauss can actually run on all water, not just the water and coolant present on the plains in Valis. This includes water in the Grenier Sea Lab and Earth Forest tile sets among others. Also, when it's night on the plains, running on the water as Gauss avoids the magnetic proc. On the Earth Forest tile set, in this room with the turbines, you can shoot these two boxes to disable the fans, allowing you to walk through unimpeded. If you pull up the map in Captura, you can see the Captura camera as a blue ally dot, which follows you around as you move. Maggots spawned by Path Assist can benefit from Wisp's Reservoir buffs. They also spawn at the same level as the weapon, and are considered alarming despite Path Assist itself being silent. If a Spectre is using a weapon that has a recharging battery, they never have to wait for said battery to refill, allowing them to spam fire the weapon indefinitely. Alright, that's everything. Normally I'd tell you to like and subscribe, but I can say with statistical backing that nobody cares about that shit. If you're new around here, I've got a Discord that you can join using the link in the description, as well as a playlist for this series that should be in the description too. I also stream every Sunday at 5.30pm CST, although this week it had to be moved to Monday. Once again though, statistically speaking, no one cares. Make sure to leave your suggestions for the next episode in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again on stream when Angels of the Zeremon drops Wednesday.